Hello students, welcome to lecture 24 of the online course on Photonic Crystals, Fundamentals and Applications. Today's lecture will be on engineering high quality factor resonant cavities or you can say high Q resonant cavities. So here is the lecture outline, we will have a brief introduction to the topic, we will discuss about designing and modeling of photonic crystal nano cavities, we will see how do we calculate the modal volume, then quality factor by volume ratio that is Q by V ratio optimization for the photonic crystal nano cavities. What is the method for designing high Q nano cavity and we will look into the methods for analyzing the quality factor. So, to begin with the photonic crystal based resonant cavities are formed with point defects, right. So, they are the key components for manipulating and controlling light at the nanoscale. So, these defects which are basically intentionally introduced, right and they are a variation to the otherwise normal periodic structure that is the photonic crystal. So, these defects allow you to localize light by disrupting the uniformity that usually allows photons to propagate freely. So, point defects which are created in photonic crystals can create uh, localized modes where light is trapped in the vicinity of the defect and this confinement is due to the disruption of the photonic band structure. So, there will be a allowed mode within the photonic band gap, okay. So, that would which you know otherwise would guide light through the crystal. So, what are the resonant frequencies of this cavity? So, any cavity will exhibit resonance. So, when you consider a defect as a resonant cavity, they are also you know for a certain frequency of light which is determined by the size, shape and the refractive index of the you know defect, those frequencies are allowed to resonate. So, this selective frequency response becomes critical in applications such as filters, lasers and sensors. So, when you analyze a cavity, the important parameter is quality factor or the Q factor. So, it basically defines the sharpness of the cavity resonance and also the energy retention capability of that cavity or the resonator. So, higher quality factor in photonic crystal cavities mean that light can resonate longer within the cavity and that enhances the light matter interaction. So, this is particularly important for increasing the efficiency of nonlinear optical processes because you will now have more light matter interaction and also it can enhance the spontaneous emission in the devices. So, what we know that these cavities are excellent platform for uh, enhanced light matter interactions, right. And this is mainly because this high quality factor cavities have the ability to confine light in a very small volume, okay. Thus, this photonic crystal cavities becomes excellent platform for enhancing the light matter interaction. And this makes them suitable for applications such as quantum computing where control over quantum bits or qubits is necessary or in creating you know highly sensitive detectors. So, there these are the applications where you know the cavity which is basically a defect in a photonic crystal can come very handy. Now, let us look into the design and modeling aspects of photonic crystal nano cavities. So, here you can see the two figures, okay. So, the first one is a cavity where one hole is missing at the center. You can see the hole is basically filled with the material of the background, okay. So, you can say that this is basically H1 cavity, okay, 
one hole is missing and it is created by removing one lattice point at the center and it could enhance the optical confinement. So it was reported by Yoshi et al in 2004. And if you see the next one, this is also another uh, point defect cavity, but here instead of one, we are basically removing three holes in a particular line. Okay? So this L3 cavity, L you can say it is for line, three means there are three holes which are basically missing. So L3 cavity involves removing of three adjacent lattice points here. And these cavities were studied extensively for its effective reduction in the radiation losses. So you can actually get very high Q factor from this kind of cavities and they were studied by Chalcraft et al in 2007. So if you simply create a point defect, it is not going to work as a very high quality you know, uh, cavity, HQ cavity. You have to do some adjustment to minimize the radiation losses. So what has been seen that in the case of H1 cavity, all the six neighboring air holes need to be slightly shifted by a distance of D, which you can see here. So there is a, you know, dislocation of this hole, this hole, this hole and all these holes, okay. Radially you can shift them outside, okay, by a distance of D, okay. That actually allows you to minimize the radiation losses from this cavity. In the case of L3 cavity, the holes which are at the edges, they need to be strategically shifted by a distance of D. So here you can see that you actually need to just shift two, two holes and that will actually help you minimize the radiation loss. So what, why we are doing this? This facilitates smoother transitions between the defect region and the surrounding photonic crystal. Okay, so there is a defect, this is a otherwise normal photonic crystal. So this shift helps you in getting a better matching, impedance matching between these two uh, areas or domains. Okay, so this adjustment will lead you to higher quality factor and lower mode volume V. Now this is some, some important factor, modal volume V and we will see now what is that modal volume. So modal volume, you can represent it by V, is basically a fundamental concept in the field of photonics, which is relevant in the study of optical cavities and waveguides. So it basically quantifies the spatial, spatial extent over which an electromagnetic mode is confined. Okay. So what is the formal definition? So the modal volume V, okay. Um, this particular term defines the volume within which the electromagnetic field associated with a particular mode of an optical resonator or waveguide is significantly concentrated. So it is essentially measuring how much space a particular mode is going to occupy. So how do you calculate this? You can calculate this by as V which is a volume integral Okay, and then you do epsilon modulus of electric field square divided by the maximum of epsilon E square. Okay, so this basically gives you the modal volume. So as you can see, this integral gives a sense of how spread out your mode is. So smaller the volume, the tighter is the mode confinement. Okay, so what becomes important in your case? is this Q by V ratio that is the quality factor divided by the modal volume ratio, right? So this becomes a critical parameter in the design of this resonant photonic crystal cavities based on point defects. Now we'll discuss some of the important uh, points that will illustrate the uh, you know significance of this particular concept. The first thing is enhanced light matter interaction. So a high Q by V ratio will indicate strong confinement of light within a small volume and that will definitely enhance the interaction between the light and matter. And this is critical for applications that rely on efficient absorption, emission or scattering of light. 
such as you will find in laser sensors and different nonlinear optical devices. Secondly, it will help you increase the parcel factor. So the QYP ratio directly influences the parcel factor which quantifies the enhancement of spontaneous emission rate within a cavity. So the emission mentioned here in the context of parcel factor refers to the spontaneous emission of photons by quantum emitters such as quantum dots or molecules when the transition from excited energy state to a lower energy state or their ground state. So this process is a fundamental phenomena in quantum optics and photonic devices. Okay, you can also think about you know quantum emitters like what are the different quantum emitters? Quantum emitters like um, quantum dots, atoms or dye molecules, they can absorb energy which would excite them to a higher energy state and after a certain time which is typically known as the excited state lifetime, they will return to a lower energy state typically to the ground state and by doing spontaneous emission. So they will release a photon. So this process is known as spontaneous emission and what will be the nature of the emitted photons? The energy of the emitted photon will correspond to the energy difference between the excited state and the lower state of the emitter and typically the direction, phase and the moment of uh, emission are random due to the quantum nature of this process. Right. So what we can see that you know a point defect in photonic crystal cavity with higher Q by V ratio can lead to a greater parcel effect thereby increasing the emission efficiency of embedded quantum emitters such as quantum dots or molecules. The third important point is that this will essentially improve the device performance. So in optical communication and computing, if you consider devices designed with high QYV ratio, they can achieve superior performance, something like you know low threshold lasers, you can design more sensitive detectors and even more effective modulators. And this is due to the intensified field interactions within the minimized modal volume. So in a very small so in a very small volume, you can have much more intense interaction of light and matter. The fourth factor is energy efficiency. So if you have devices based on high Q by V ratio, they are generally more energy efficient. The strong confinement of the electromagnetic field would basically reduces the power requirements for achieving significant optical effects and this that will lower the operational cost and enhances device longevity. So the parcel factor that we have discussed can be denoted by FP. It is basically a critical measure in quantum and optical physics that quantifies the enhancement of spontaneous emission of an emitter such as an atom quantum dot or molecule when placed inside a resonant cavity um, compared to its emission in free space. So that is how the emitters will also become more efficient when you put them inside a uh, high Q by V uh, ratio cavity. Okay. So what are the key aspects of the parcel factor as we discussed? The first one is enhancement of emission. The parcel factor basically represents how much faster an emitter is able to release photons when it is inside a cavity resonator versus the same emitter in an open environment. So what is the formula that gives you the parcel, par parcel factor? It is Fp given by 3 by 4 pi square lambda by n whole cube okay, q by v. So n is basically the refractive index of the medium. What is lambda? That is the wavelength of the emitted light in the medium. And V is nothing but the modal volume of the cavity and uh, it represents the volume over which the cavity mode has significant field 
strength. So, with that we move on to the methods of optimization of Q by V ratio in the case of photonic crystal nanocavities. So, when you talk about optimization, we have to play with the you know geometrical parameters something like you know the radius or the shift that can significantly change the Q by V ratio. So, we have to do geometrical optimization including re reducing the radius of the air holes near the defect and you can also introduce you know lateral displacement which is D as we discussed earlier. These two things can enhance the Q by V ratio by minimizing the reflection mismatch and the propagation losses. Okay? So, here in figure 2 you can see that you know Q by V the red ones show the Q by V ratio and lambda C shows you the cavity resonance wavelength and it is basically function of D. Okay? So, the blue one is plotted here and the red curve corresponds to this axis. Okay? So, it is basically times 10 to the power 5. So, what you can see here that um, the Q by V ratio initially increases with the lateral displacement D. Okay? It will reach a maximum at some optimal value and then it will drastically decrease again if you go further. That means, you need to do precise geometrical adjustment to find out this optimal shift that can give you very high you know um, Q by V ratio. Now, what are these two curves? The first one is for the H1 photonic crystal cavity okay, and the second one is basically for L3 photonic crystal cavity. Okay. So, what is seen here is that you know even with small adjustment from here to here which is something like you know 10 nanometer shift you can significantly enhance the Q by V ratio. It means it is pretty sensitive. Okay? If you consider the performance of L3 photonic crystal cavity that is this particular figure B. Okay? Here also you can see that with about 10 to the power 5 order of uh, Q by V ratio you can achieve. Okay? you can go here that is much higher than this uh, H1 cavity. So, here the maximum value is 0.35 into 10 to the power 5. Here the maximum value is 1 into 10 to the power 5. So, it is much stronger resonance okay, and higher Q by V value and you can see that the shift here is also larger. It is showing a displacement of 212 nanometer okay, and it corresponds to a resonant wavelength of 3740 nanometer. Okay? So, it actually highlights or underscores the effectiveness of this approach of you know optimization to achieve a very good resonant cavity which can give you extremely high Q by V ratio. Okay? So, we understood that because of very high Q by V values the L3 cavities leading to a potential design for various applications of resonators based on photonic crystal. So, L3 becomes the obvious choice. right? So, in the following discussion, we will take uh, different strategies of designing this L3 photonic crystal cavities and we will also see how the quality factor is being calculated. So, now we go into the design aspect of this high Q nano cavity and as mentioned, we will be focusing more on the uh, L3 kind of cavity. So, the Q factor per modal volume that is the key parameter here that is the Q by V ratio that determines the strength of various cavity interactions and an ultra small cavity enables large scale integration along with single mode operation over a broad range of wavelength. However, the high Q cavities with dimensions of the order of optical wavelengths are difficult to realize since radiation losses are basically inversely proportional to the cavity size. So, if you see here, this is uh, the schematic of 
this one shows the schematic of a point defect nano cavity okay so this has got a point defect in a 2d photonic crystal and this one the b figure b shows the design cavity which is created by displacing two air holes one this side one this side okay at both edge so this is again a l3 cavity and here you are basically displacing one two three on one side these three holes are being displaced a b c here on the other side also you are displacing three holes so six air holes are basically displaced here near the two edges so that could give you even higher quality factor okay so if you see the basic structure it is basically composed of three missing holes in a particular line so it is again a l3 cavity the photonic crystal structure you can see it has got uh, a triangular lattice of air holes with the lattice constant of a okay it is marked here and the thickness of this slab is considered to be 0.6 a and uh, the radius of the air holes are considered to be 0.29 a okay these are the physical parameters now what are the important design rules for achieving high q nano cavities the envelope function of the electric field profile within the cavity will play an important role so the in plane mode profiles envelope should vary gently but remain spatially localized resembling a gaussian function so this helps achieve strong optical confinement in a small area thus increasing the quality factor while maintain a very compact volume so what are the mechanisms of light confinement first in in the in plane direction it utilizes the photonic band gap effect to confine light okay so you will actually place a light in the frequency of the band gap of this photonic crystal so that light cannot escape out okay so that is how you typically can get from this for 2d photonic crystal slab you know what is the band gap and you can put a you can choose the wavelength which is within the band gap of this slab and in the vertical uh, dimension it basically employs total internal reflection at the slab and air cladding interface and that will give you the confinement of light okay so this confinement is essential for the functionality of the high q nano cavities or else like will leak out and you will not get a very good quality factor of resonance next what is the importance of smooth electric field distribution so if you have abrupt changes in the electric field distribution that can disrupt the total internal reflection condition which occurs at the cavity and the air clad interface so to ensure smooth transition in the electric field is crucial is crucial for fulfilling the total internal reflection conditions effectively and this will also help suppressing uh, out of slab light leakage even when the cavity is having a very tiny volume now let us apply these conditions and understanding in the cavity design so if you are applying this design principles in making a cavity that will allow you to realize a high q nano cavity with minimized light leakage and maximizing the performance even within a compact structure so the important strategies for cavity designs are the fine tuning of air hole positions we have seen that d that small displacement plays a very important role so that allows you to enhance the quality factor so what do you have to do there adjusting the air holes near both edges of the cavity so we are right now only focused about the l3 cavity because we have seen that l3 cavity is giving us much higher quality factor as compared to h1 cavity that is a single hole cavity okay so adjusting the air holes near both edges of the cavity helps to optimize the total internal reflection condition at the slab air interface and that is important for increasing the quality factor of the cavity second aspect 
important aspects are light confinement and wave vector components. So, light confined in a small cavity will consist of numerous plane wave components, each with specific wave vector magnitudes and directions. So, these are for the plane wave. Okay. How about the tangential component of the k vector that is k parallel? This will determine whether the total internal reflection is achieved at the slab air interface. Now, what is the escape criteria? If k parallel or you can say mod, mod k parallel for each component lies between 0 and uh, 2 pi by lambda naught, okay, light can escape from the cavity to the air cladding due to the you know fulfillment of conservation of law or you can say momentum conservation law at the interface. So, how you can make the light confined within the cavity? So, what is the confinement criteria? You can confine light when modulus k parallel okay, that is the tangential wave vector okay, needs to be larger than 2 pi by lambda naught. That means, in that case light will remain confined within the cavity uh, due to unfulfilled uh, conservation law that is total internal reflection. Now, we can analyze this using uh, Fourier transformation. So, here is a figure that shows first the electric field distribution that is E y of the fundamental mode of the cavity without a air hole displaced at both edges. So, here you are not displacing the air holes at the both edges and uh, this figure B is the profile of A along the center line. So, you are just taking a line and this is how the variation will look like. So, blue means a dip, red means a peak because that is how the values are defined. Okay. So, here you get a peak, next you move you will get a dip and so on. So, you are basically going across the center. Okay. So, what are here basically you are having a electric field um, light and also the fitted curve which corresponds to the product of fundamental sinusoidal wave and a Gaussian envelope function. And this figure C is basically a 1D Fourier transform spectra of this one. Okay. So, this is in K space, this is in physical space. Fine. So, here you can actually see that this region, the gray region from here to here is being marked as the leaky region. Okay. So, what we have seen here is a electric field distribution plot in 3D FDTD. Okay. So, you have used this 3D FDTD method to obtain this in plane electric field distribution at the slab surface. So, you can also see that the electric field is predominantly located at the cavity center. So, it resembles a 1D cavity resonating along the center line as you can see here. Now, what is the impact of the envelope function? Okay. So, the Fourier transform of this EY has revealed that the most components outside the leaky region. Okay. And th this will actually uh, help you to hold the resonance. So, but you can see that some components still fall within the leaky region, which is basically the shaded region, and that will reduce the quality factor. So, what is the envelope influence? The fundamental wave contributes to the peaks, which are outside the leaky region and while the envelope function basically modifies the spectrum allowing some component to be within the leaky region. So, what are the design considerations for high Q cavity? First thing is you have to avoid any abrupt changes. So, any abrupt variation in the envelope function at the cavity edge will introduce additional wave vectors or wave vector components and that would lie typically inside the 
leaky region and anything inside the leaky region will basically increase the light leakage okay so what should be the optimal envelope profile it should be a gently varying but specially localized envelope function something like gaussian that could minimize the leaky component in the fourier spectrum within that leaky region and then it can enhance the quality factor now we move on to the methods of analyzing the quality factor so here we will describe the uh, methods that can be used to calculate the quality factors of the cavity modes the q factor can be expressed as this omega naught ut over minus dut by dt so as you can see from this equation one the q, q factor can be calculated by measuring the slope of the decay okay of any field so what is omega naught here it is the angular frequency of the cavity mode and ut is basically the total energy stored in the cavity and uh, the equation one can be derived can be used to derive the following equation so you can write ut equals u naught exponential minus omega naught t by q and for example you know the magnetic field can be expressed as you know ln ht equals ln h of 0 minus omega naught by 2 q t okay so what we understand from here is that you can find out the modal volume of the cavity by inserting the calculated electric field distribution into this particular equation so epsilon r is basically the dielectric constant and e is basically the electric field right so this is how you can first obtain the magnetic field from that you can obtain the electric field and you can also put it in this equation and obtain what is v so you can calculate q and v and you can get the q by v ratio so what are the calculation methodology so the methods discussed earlier can be employed to analyze the q factor and the module vo model volume of the cavities as air holes at various positions are shifted so here you can see slightly enlarged figure so a b c are the three holes which move this way here also a b c are the three holes which are moving this side okay so this is the first case okay where the first case is basically where you know mm, only the displacement is happening at the air holes which are at position a so only these two air holes are being shifted okay so shift of air holes at position a okay so this blue dot line tells you about the calculated modal volume which is in the unit of micrometer cube and the red lines tells you about the calculated q okay so what you can see that um, with shift in this only first hole a you, your quality factor can reach 10 to the power 5 when the displacement is 0 0.2 a okay and beyond this displacement if you go further the quality factor will decrease and uh, that is because of the deviation of the electric field envelope from the gaussian function so if if the envelope uh, di distorts from a Gaussian function you will see that there will be more uh, fields into the leaky region and the quality factor will basically uh, get reduced okay so here the modal volume remains relatively constant despite the change of Q and this is likely due to the minor scale of displacement um, as compared to the overall cavity size now you repeat the same with you know the second hole this was this is the second hole is b on both side so now you just move the air holes in b you see this is the method or this is how it changes so here you can see that you know you you are keeping the air holes at position a to be fixed at the optimum place that is 0.2 a and now you are shifting the air holes at position b and you can see that at 0.025 a is here you are getting the best quality factor okay 
so this is telling you that you are actually going beyond 10 to the power 5 so it means by tuning the second hole you are now being able to improve your quality factor that is good what happens to the modal volume more or less same now you fixed a and b to their optimum position and only tune the third third uh, hole that is the c holes on both side and you can see that you can further push it away so this is the position c and if you can place it at 0 0.2 a you can go up to 260000 will be your new quality factor and this is the fixed value of a and b in this case so this, this further helps you improve the quality factor right and this is the blue blue crosses tells you about the calculated uh, modal volume so what do you, how do you interpret so you can interpret the results that the stability of the modal volume across the displacement in each case you are seeing that the modal volume is more or less same so it tells you that the changes near the cavities periphery minimally affect the concentrated electric field which is at the center of the cavity so this is the cavity right so this field is mainly at the center so whatever you are changing in the periphery hardly changes the modal volume okay but so your v is remaining same but you are able to increase your q so you are essentially increasing your q by v ratio so this study actually illustrates a nice control of the photonic properties through strategic displacement of this air holes near the cavity thus optimizing the q vector without affecting the modal volume so now how do you experimentally measure it so to give you all a brief idea of how the quality factor is calculated experimentally we shall now see a short discussion on the experiments of this uh, l3 cavity okay so what you do you basically take a uh, line wave guide which is next to the cavity okay so photons are basically injected from this line wave guide okay facet to excite the cavity so you can see in this case this is the transmission spectrum observed so there is a dramatic drop in the transmission of the cavity at the at the, at the place of cavity resonance okay here so this is the um, transmission spectrum so there is a drop means that light is getting basically coupled to the cavity okay and uh, if you look into b this is the radiation spectrum that is basically telling you the details of the light being emitted from the cavity into the free space and transmitted through the waveguide so it actually happens at the same position right so this wavelength is getting trapped in the cavity so here also it is shown uh, schematically fine so how do you calculate the q factor so the q factor can be calculated like this you can first obtain the line width of the spectrum radiation spectrum uh, from this figure b that is delta lambda okay so this basically represents the quality factor getting influenced by both the intrinsic property of the cavity and the coupling losses to the waveguide mode so that is why it is called q total so q factor of the cavity is basically the ratio of the total energy stored in the cavity to the energy loss per cycle so you can actually write it in terms of q is nothing but omega naught divided by delta omega so this formula represents the ratio of the resonant frequency of the stored energy that is omega naught to the spectral width of the energy loss per cycle that is delta omega clear so if you alternatively you can write this in terms of wavelength as q equals lambda naught by delta lambda so what is lambda naught that is the central wavelength of the resonance and delta lambda is basically the fwhm full width half maximum of the resonance that indicates the spectral range over which the energy of the mode is significantly above half of its maximum value so with that how do you obtain the intrinsic quality factor that is qv 
So intrinsic quality factor is isolated from the total quality factor and it actually reflects the losses due to coupling to free space only. So it is not associated with the loss towards the waveguide mode. Okay. So you can actually calculate QV using this formula. So you, you know Q total divided by square root of T. T is basically the transmittance at the resonant wavelength. Okay. So how do you measure this transmittance? The transmittance T at um, resonant wavelength is basically measured as a ratio of the transmitting energy in the presence of the cavity near the waveguide to the energy in the absence of the cavity. Okay? So you can actually determine experimentally what is your T1 and what is your T2, these two heights. Okay? So it is like if the cavity is not there, it would have been here. right? So that is T1. And because of the cavity, it has now gone down to this level that is T2. So these two transmission levels are known. So you can actually obtain what is T2 by T1. Now, with that, we understand how we can calculate the Q factor experimentally, right? Now, before concluding this lecture, we shall briefly discuss about an important theory called couple mode theory that can be used to derive the formula that is given in equation 5, this one, okay? So, let us have a quick look at that. I will not go into very much details, but briefly tell you how it, how it is done. So, he, the, here is the method of deriving the quality factor. So, this is a schematic of that setup. So, it is a 2D photonic crystal slab okay, that includes a cavity here and a waveguide. Okay, so, this is the port 1 and this is the port 2, input port and the through port. Okay, and we have now named the waves coming into and going out of the uh, ports. So, the amplitude of the incoming wave coupled to the waveguide from this port 1 which is the input phase A and the output wave reflected by the point defect okay, cavity to port 1. So, they can be named as S plus 1, S minus 1. Okay. So, this one is coming from the cavity, this one is going to, towards this from port 1 okay, and this one is reflected from the cavity. Similarly, the amplitude of the outgoing wave to port 2 that is the output phase A can be num, num, leveled as S minus 2 and the cavity mode okay, will be A1. So, you can see A1 over here. Okay. So, the decay rates from the cavity into the waveguide and the free space are considered as 1 by tau in and into the free space it is considered as 1 over tau v. Okay. So, with the two decay rates you can also um, find out the two quality factor that is q in which is tau in omega naught by 2 and then q v will be tau v omega naught by then the equations for, for the evaluation of cavity modes in time and the outgoing waves are given as follows. So, these are obtained using the couple mode theory. We will not go into much detail, just write down the expressions here and tell you that once you obtain S minus 2 and S minus 1, you can calculate what is transmittance. Okay? As S minus 2 over S plus 1 modulus square and this turns out to be this. Okay? So, when you take the condition of resonance that is omega equals omega naught, these terms cancel out and you simply get this ratio and that becomes 1 over q v whole square divided by 1 over q v plus 1 over q in whole square. Okay? So, since the total loss from the cavity is equal to as you can see here, since the total loss from the cavity is equal to the sum of the radiation loss to the free space plus the coupling loss to that uh, line waveguide, you can also write the total Q as 1 over Q that is equal to 1 over QV plus 1 over Q in. Okay? So, once you substitute Q 
skewing from this equation into the previous equation, you can get you know t equals the transmission equals q over q v whole square. Okay? So, this is the same equation that you have seen in equation 4 earlier that has been used for the measurement procedure section. So, this is how you can obtain the quality factor and that can and um, v we have already shown how the v is calculated and that is how you are able to make high q resonant filters. So, this is all for this lecture. We shall start the discussion of overview of photon crystal fibers in the next lecture. If you have any um, queries or doubt regarding this lecture, you can drop an email to this email address dev.shikdar at iitg.ac.in mentioning MOOC, photonic crystals and this lecture number on the subject line. Thank you. Mm -hmm.